The following is a low spoon production. So tired. Hi guys, I'm Michelle. This is my wheelchair Betty, and you're watching Rebel Wheels NYC. Let's do this. Today we have another question for for Ask Rebel Wheels NYC. So basically, what that is is lovely people uh, send me a question. You can put that either in the YouTube comment or find me on various forms of social media. And then if I have an opinion or answer to your question, I will answer it in a video. And today we have a question from Victoria, AKA Chronicles. She, besides being an awesome human being, has an awesome YouTube show. Definitely check her out. I'll put a link in the description. And her question is this. Meow, meow, meow. How long did it take for you to feel confident in yourself to speak out uh, regarding disability issues and your life? Hello, wheelchair. <laughs> for me personally, I, I'm not, I wasn't always in a wheelchair. I used to walk. And then it got to the point where I went from walking, cane, seat cane, <laughs> rollator, manual wheelchair, and then motorized wheelchair. And initially, me and my mother's attitude towards me getting a wheelchair was very, very negative. And sometimes we, we looked down on people who used wheelchairs, it wasn't that. It was just that the wheelchair became this symbol of like, uh-oh, because you need a cane now, but at least you know, you know, you're in a wheelchair, it hasn't gotten that bad. And that attitude actually held me back because for a while, I would say for a while, I actually could have really needed a wheelchair. But I didn't want to get one because like what it symbolized and all this stuff. And then at one point where I just, it was obvious I just needed one and I wasn't able to leave my apartment, my attitude towards the wheelchair uh, started to shift from uh-oh to like freedom. Disability, pride. I think the other thing I, I had to do was kind of view disability as a positive thing, which was difficult at first, and it was a definite process because for one, and whenever I go to these doctors, they didn't know what was going on. I, was, I remained undiagnosed for 10 years. And so that was very, very stressful and not knowing what was happening to me and how to manage my symptoms and how to take care of myself. And so really, because of that, disability was not this like, source of pride, it was a source of stress uh, and a source of depression and, and, and unhappiness. What, what I eventually realized in time is that my disability and my health is not the problem, it's the system that makes it so hard for me to be independent uh, at that time. And for hard, so hard for me to get proper support and answers and how to manage my, my health and manage my body. And that's the problem, not me. Hello, ableism. Eh. The general public are just royal shits when you're in a wheelchair. It just, and to this day, they just stare at me and it's looks of pity and confusion and disgust. People make comments like, ugh, look at that, you know, or what a waste, what a shame. That was really hard to deal with. One, because I didn't know that that existed. Like I never did that to anyone else who was disabled. So I didn't know that that was gonna be in my future. So that was a shock, but then also just finding a way, one, where I did not internalize the ableism, because for a long time I was. I would just look, I would like make no, I, I'd look down and make no eye contact with anyone because I just felt so ashamed. Initially, I gained a lot of weight because I turned to food for comfort because I just, you know, for that hug, I just felt, it was so incredibly, hard and shitty to go out into the world minding my own business not you know giving anyone the finger or any you know not doing anything just running errands or just getting out and getting these reactions of just oh my god could there be anything worse than you and it wasn't until i kind of realized I'm like okay i need to flip the script or it's just going to devour me whole and so i started creating like hashtags or, or like like phrases like you know, spastic fantastic it represents by flipping the script it became it started to become this thing of pride i started to take the power back oh. <laughs> that being said i was living in an area at the time when i first got my wheelchair where i could go a whole month and not see another person in a wheelchair and and two things that really helped with, with that one learning the word ableism because i never heard of it before so I'm like, oh my god, there's a word for this? And then I found this disability center that also had some art classes. And that's where I started talking to some other people about the experience. They're like, oh my god, yes, it happens to me all the time. And I'm like, ah! Seriously. <laughs> Finding my people. 
It was also an issue because, you know, a lot of times I would encounter internalized ableism in the community. Uh, it was also an issue because I am queer. It was sometimes even at disability centers when I would find people in wheelchairs, maybe they'd make some homophobic comments. And then I'd be like, well, I don't know where I belong. The final push. I think the final thing that really led to me finding my voice, because for a long time I did not, even as I decorated Betty, as seen here, <laughs> same time as I was starting to find my voice, I also did not want to focus on disability activism. Because in many ways, I still had that self-doubt and there was still always that struggle. Because, because a lot of the times when I spoke to non-disabled people about my experiences of ableism, often they were dismissed. Sometimes it was done with good intentions. Like they, yeah, they, want me, they didn't want me to feel bad. So they just kind of said, no, 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 I'm sure they're just looking at you because you're cute when that just wasn't the case. And as a result, it, they just dismissed my experiences completely, which was very, very confusing. <laughs> uh, is it me or just this is messed up? I can't, I can't, I can't. End scene. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to, to represent on an individual basis, but when you're not part of the community, you don't get that support. And without that support, you feel very much alone and then you don't want to spend yet more time and energy on something that is very draining for you. So I was in animal rights, I'm in anti-war, I was, I was in Occupy Wall Street, but it really wasn't until I had a step back where I was no longer able to participate in, in, in a lot of these activist movements. And I noticed that because I was spastic, Sometimes I'd be hunched over. The ableism just inc like vastly increased. And shit is just too thick and present and serious for me not to advocate for myself. Connecting to the community, take two. And I was like, all right, I am going to try again to connect with people within the disability community. I will say at this point that not only had I met some fellow people who were uh, queer and in wheelchairs, I also met some intersectional disability activists, which makes all the difference. So that was like, ah, my people, <laughs> you know. So I started to get involved in various hashtags. And also during this time, I started this YouTube show, which was great because I really could physically attend the protests. This was something that I could do at home. The support I got from the show uh, and really just getting involved in disabled YouTube and disabled Twitter was fabulous and very, very healing and very validating. I really felt like I finally found my place in the community. And I continue, it's, it's still a process. I'm still finding my voice. And this show has been a great tool for that. We're like, I'm finding my voice by making these videos. And then the awesome thing is that there are people who have responded saying, thank you, that's helped me. And I'm like, does it get better than that? I don't think so. I think that's really, really awesome. Thank you a lot. And if you are looking to connect with the disability community online, check out the description. Of how did you find your voice? Or are you still finding it? Let me know. Put all your comments in the comment section because that's the way I belong. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah.